Oh, blessings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Dogate and Director Yenishe, Adona Enishinigi A, Inde Nishe, Irish Bashachin, Inde Dashache, German Dashanelli, Akote Go A E Tishli A, Portland, Oregon, in Shasha Ma A, Kathy Lindsay Woye, Shaza A, Dale Ecker Wole. My name is Andrew Ecker. My mother, Kathy Lindsay. My father, Dale Ecker. My mother's mother, Elva Gallegos. Apache woman from New Mexico, my father's mother, Evelyn Beatty, Irish woman from Pennsylvania, my mother's father, Leroy Lindsay, Apache man from Arkansas, my father's father, Wayne Ecker, German and Algonquin from Pennsylvania. And I have uh, a beautiful daughter named Bailey, a son named Peyton, and a lovely, amazing fiance named Monica. I'm grateful to be here with all of you, sharing in this day, uh, this day in which we are navigating a global pandemic. We are navigating a cultural transformation and we are witnessing the unfolding of many behaviors inside of the container of that reality. Uh, many behaviors from people that we um, consider close to us, friends, family members, uh, people that are going through the trials and tribulations of uncertain times and the level of anger and frustration and the level of disconnect and really, um, I would say rudeness uh, is at a level that is uh, causing a great exodus from Facebook. Uh, it's causing an exodus from other social media platforms. People are leaving and are disconnecting themselves from friends that they've had on the social media platforms for years. And I'm witnessing this go all around me. And I'm seeing people in my circle, people that I've trusted, people that I've thought um, were very valuable to me. And, you know, what comes forward for me right now is something that is maybe going to seem a little surprising uh, for you. It's maybe going to seem a little surprising for myself, but I once was a pastor uh, for three and a half years. I worked in the inner city and uh, facilitated um, church experience for children in Sunny Slope, a drug infested neighborhood, a neighborhood with a lot of crime, uh, prostitution, um, drugs, gangs, just, you know, you name it. Uh, you know, oftentimes I would go and knock on a door to get a kid to go to church, to ask them if they wanted to come to our, bro our bus program, and there would be a person, you know, smoking crack, like right outside their door, or getting high on meth, or stumbling around drunk. And when I was in the church environment, which was something that I, I needed to leave, I felt like I had fulfilled kind of my calling inside of that space. It was challenging for me to walk away from the relationships that I had, and also the whole kind of volunteer uh, pastoral position. I had grew a ministry from about five kids to 160 kids uh, that I was ministering. Uh, eight, you know, I, I grew a recovery, a group of Christian recovery homes from one recovery home to nine recovery homes, you know, during this time that I was involved in, in Christianity. And I was really living like you know, to the optimal state of, of what it could be inside of that container. I was on TBN, you know, celebrated all over the community. Evangelical organizations, uh, you know, were, were a part of my reality. Uh, big name businesses, big name people, you know, that was the world that I was in. And I, I left it. I left that world. Um, but I do have a lot of of guidance that came through during that time and a lot of treasured wisdoms, wisdoms that I feel are applicable no matter where you're at, regardless of, you know, if you're devoted your life to Christianity and following Jesus, or you've gone the way of spirituality and maybe you've loosened yourself from this idea of God can only show up as Jesus. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at now. You know, I love Jesus. I love all of his teachings. I love the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm, I'm a person that will always, in a certain sense, be dedicated to the values that I learned inside of Christianity. As a whole, the system of the religion is something that I feel, um, I feel like it's not for me right now. Yet the treasures of understanding and compassion and love that came through uh, during that time are wisdoms that I apply to my life today. 
And for those of you that have heard me pray, you, you oftentimes will hear me pray uh, in a very powerful way. Uh, and that discipline of prayer came through in my life uh, while I was uh, serving at the church, while I was pastoring, while I was doing all of that. And one of the things that really comes forward for me now is a, a preaching that uh, Pastor Tommy Barnett shared. And this was during a time when I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, right? These were some televangelists that got caught up in a whole bunch of, uh, of really bad stuff. And they were persecuted online, and, or not online, on television, and, and went through, you know, a ostracization from the church. And when they were in that container, there were many people that left uh, these two individuals. They just left them, threw them out, you know, to the, to the dogs, if you will. And uh, Pastor Tommy Barnett, who I was under his church when I was a pastor, uh, working in inner city missions, and he said that during that time, he um, he actually he actually embraced uh, Jim Baker and had him come into the church, and he sat and he lived with him, and he like did what he could to minister to him, and he loved on this guy who had gone from basically being the the greatest preacher in the world, literally you know, having a, a, a campus and a school and a church and a worldwide ministry to being humbled by a situation and circumstance that came out in the public. Now, what's really interesting about today, and this was something that I feel many of us have never really, maybe, you know, didn't ever want to experience, which is like uh, what Andy Warhol said, right? Our 10 seconds of fame, you know, Facebook famous and Instagram famous is a reality for us today. And when we're in a climate of cultural transformation, there are people that are out there that are saying the some of the most harsh things that you can imagine about race and about um, the pandemic and are really just going into a whole place of anger and frustration. And I get that, you know, I... Uh, I feel compassion for those people. I feel so much love. I just want to hold them, you know? I want to hold them and I, I want to tell them that everything's going to be okay. As I see them kind of flailing their hands verbally and attacking people and getting angry and bringing up like all kinds of conspiracy theories and all kinds of information and, and your information is not the truth and my information is the real truth and, and this is the only truth and you're, you're, you know, you're a sheep and you're an idiot and you're a fool to be following these people and all of the harshness, the rudeness that's out there right now. It's really evident and I know that hurting people hurt. I know that a wounded animal, when it's in its corner, you have to be very careful. Even if that animal is, like, let's say the animal is caught up in, in, in bob wire. And the animal, you want to help that animal. You want to help the animal escape. And you're, you're coming up to the animal and you're like, oh, the animal is bleeding and the animal is hurting. And, you know, there's this beautiful fawn, this little baby deer, and it's all wrapped in bob wire. And you feel so much compassion for that deer and you want to help the deer. And as you, you come closer to the deer, the deer starts to bite at you and starts to kick at you. And in that moment, right, there's like this space that, that says, I need to slow down. I need to really approach with gentleness. I need to be gentle. I need to be loving. I need to really let go of my fear. And... This reality is something that comes home for me in a really deep way because I see my friends on social media making this exodus and dropping other friends. And I see them fighting with people and I feel the density of that energy and I feel like this gravitation towards it. And when I feel that gravitation towards the anger and the frustration, there's like a tendency of wanting to defend and that has been kind of my operating system for many years. And as a, a person that's in the process of maturing, and as a person that's in the process of learning how to, to sit in, in the council of the mighty and the holy and the blessed, I have learned 
that my need to defend is much less important as my need to love and to show compassion and kindness. And we in our home and mine and Monica's life, there's this, this whole conversation that's come up. And I have been a little bit reluctant to come on here. I've been a little bit reluctant to come on and, and fulfill my, my ministry. You know, you all are my ministry. I went from facilitating one to five drum circles a day, working in, you know, psychiatric lockdowns, memory cares, me and Monica going in every day to, to help the community, to really transform the density of human suffering into joy, into laughter, into love and gratitude, to sitting here like, who am I now? You know, who am I without my drum circle facilitation business? Who am I without my wellness practice? Who am I without, you know, the acknowledgement of the community, the awards, the accolades, uh, you know, the keynote speaking gigs? Like, who, who am I without all of this? And I found myself in this space, and I, I'm still emerging from this space of, you know, now my ministry is this global online platform. And, you know, I've, I've seen some dreams come true so far working with the sacred seven and going out there and ministering to people and, and really helping them utilize this indigenous technology of self-identity in the contemporary, because these evidence-based indigenous practices are still relevant to today. And that's become our ministry. That's become our hope. That's become what we're doing now with our lives. It's powerful to make that transition and still, in the fulfillment that I get from coming on here and praying with all of you and being with you and sharing some of the frustrations and the whole journey with the Sacred Seven and the victories, you know, today was a huge victory, which I'll share with you. In, in that space, there's been a reluctance. There's been, I'm not sure if fear is exactly the right word or if it's, there's been a slowness, you know, in my soul. There's been a slowness in my spirit. And it has, um, it's had some consequences. You know, I have, um, in a lot of ways, felt like maybe I don't have uh, enough to offer right now, you know, in, in the chaos of seeing the exodus from Facebook and seeing the people around me really participate in anger and frustration and rudeness, straight up rudeness and meanness. Maybe, you know, I don't have anything to offer to this conversation on Facebook, yet I feel that in, in my absence that it gives permission to manifest these, these ways. So, you know, I'm back today and sharing with you a message of kindness and love and gratitude and uh, self-identity, relational intelligence, you know, sovereignty, the things that I, I really get excited about having a conversation and unpacking. And is there a lot of racism in the world? Yes. Is there a lot of white supremacy in the world? Yes. Is there a lot of, of you know, conspiracies out there and people trying to take advantage of people? Yes. But today I choose to trust. Today I choose to love. Today I choose to show up and to be a part of the conversation on Facebook and to be a part of the social media and to be a part of proclaiming the goodness of kindness and the goodness of love. And, you know, like my mom said, giving people the benefit of the doubt, you know. Um, the reactions that are happening because of the global pandemic, because of the cultural crisis, because of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, the, you know, the taking down of statues, all of these things. Uh, all of this has led to this climate. And I know that behaviors that are manifesting in this climate are different than behaviors that would manifest outside of this climate. What would manifest in the wilderness, sitting by the fire, in, in my drum circle, in my facilitated drum circle, you know, there's a beauty that comes out in people. There's a beauty that comes out in people when we share in authenticity and vulnerability and when we hold each other in love and when we hold each other in kindness and when we give each other the benefit of the doubt. It's a challenging time to do that. It is. 
we're divided in many ways and it hurts, you know, it hurts to see people throw up their hands and give up. It hurts to see good people that have a powerful voice on Facebook really, um, really just quit, you know, and I, I'm showing up today. I'm showing up in, in the best way that I can. And I'm encouraging all of you, you know, let's bombard this platform with love. Let's bombard it with spirituality. Let's open up the container and just start letting spirit show up. Just letting the Holy Spirit just minister through all of us to every single person and just really allow for us to access the density of this suffering and this illusion and confusion that's out there and just go deep into it because in the density of this human suffering is a magnitude of potential, a magnitude of potential, liberation, sovereignty, and optimized living. I'm believing that with you, relative. I'm believing that with you. I am holding the space for that manifestation. And I want you to know that I know that I'm not alone, that there are many of us that are here. And if you feel alone, if you feel like you're, you're by yourself, I just want you to know that I got your back, you know, and that I care about you. And if you haven't heard these words in a while, I want to tell you that I love you and I'm grateful for you. And I believe that you're not the Big Bang, the result of the Big Bang. You know, I believe that you are the Big Bang. I believe that you are the witness of God itself, Goddess herself. You are the totality of the experience and the greatness of oneness all wrapped up in a human flesh suit. You are beautiful and I care about you. And I believe that the greatest thing that we can do is just keep on showing kindness to one another. Just keep on loving one another. Keep on doing our best to be here and to be vulnerable and to be intimate with one another and to realize that, you know, we are under the blanket, the metaphysical architecture of prophecy. We are in the times in which we have been waiting for. We are in the times of great undoing, unraveling. We are in the times of great awakening. The apocalypse is happening. The apocalypse is just the veil being lifted. You know, the veil of separation from one another, the veil of separation from love, the veil of the separation from the eternal. We're in that time. And it's a time to rejoice. It's a time to witness the power of love drawing us all near, creating a catalyst for transformation. It's a time to witness the behaviors of those that are around us with compassion. As challenging as that may be, when we sit in the reflection of compassion and love, it begins to create a manifestation and displacement of energy that serves the optimal state of the collective consciousness. We are a single light beam inside of the totality. We are the stars that shine in the sun that are made up of the same substance as the sun. Each one of those individual stars glistens in the night, glitters up there in the sky and comes together like Voltron to create the sun. It's the same energy. This is us. When we come together like that, we shine even brighter. Embrace it. Embrace the truth of who you are. Realize that the victory is here. We are the victory. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the catalyst of transformation. We are the global evidence of love. Woo! And it's a time to get excited. You know, and I know that every single one of you that are open to hearing this, that you're hearing it, that you're feeling it, that you know that there's a witness going on in your life, that the fear, the uncertainty, all of the confusion of the illusion is being loosened. And you are burning like the blue flame fire that burns in the vacuum of space that cuts through the chains of captivity. This is how I see you burning, powerful, focused. You are coming into a greater sense of you, a greater knowing of you. The climate of COVID, the climate of cultural transformation, the climate in which is, which is the air that we are breathing is filling your lungs and you are manifesting greatness. I believe this. And I know that you've been drawn into this ministry. You've been drawn into this vehicle, into this place of transformation for a reason. 
And I want to stay connected with you. Please get a free copy of my book. You know, we came out with the audio book. You can get the audio book and the PDF copy that you can download and read or print or give away. You can get it all for free. Just go to thesacred7.com. You're also going to get information on our next upcoming journey into the Sacred 7, which again is free for those that cannot afford it, but it is so reasonable that anyone with a lemonade stand can can make an effort to make it happen for themselves. We are going into a deep, deep journey together, a deep journey, and we are uh, coming through, breaking through the ground with powerful transformation. It's happening all the time in this community that we're developing together. We're facilitating, and it's so exciting, and I want you to be a part of it. Please connect with us. Go to thesacred7.com, get a book connect with us, send me an email, send me a direct message. If you're in need of prayer, please ask. You know, I send out voice clip prayers all the time to people that are asking for prayer. People I don't even know, you know, people that are part of, you know, groups that I'm in that, you know, post on there, hey, I need prayer for my mom, my dad. I just, you know, instead of like, not praying for them. I go to their profile. I press their profile and I press the record button and I just hold that and I give them a prayer. You know, I know we need encouragement and guess what? The fuel that, that stoking the fire of our spirituality, getting into our practices, getting into our meditation, our prayer, igniting ourselves. These are the keys that will unlock so much. And Monica is telling me here that it's almost time for me to go. I love her for keeping me on track. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out, okay? So um, come into the prayer place. Just focus on the earth. Focus on your heart. Let's open up together. You know, take a deep breath in, relative. Connect with me now. Let's come become the cord of many strands that is not easily broken. The place of agreement is a place of power. And I come into this prayer now. What comes forward for me is the power of love and transformation. I thank the creator. I thank you, creator. I thank you for the above place, the below place, the inside place, the east, the south, the west, the north, all the holy ones that are there. The Gan, the Kachina, the Yebache, the holy angel light beings of the Akmal Atam, the people of this land of Phoenix. We thank you for all of the indigenous people of all of the lands that all of my relatives that are listening to this beautiful broadcast of prayer have allowed themselves to live in and live on and live with. And we thank you for the air, the water, the fire, the earth, gravity, time, and spirit. We thank you for a wave of kindness, a wave of love moving upon the earth right now. And I pray that we would receive it from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet as we even magnify love, as we even go forward into the place in which there is the absence of love, that we would be the magnification of love, that people that see us would know that we are filled with the great spirit, the Holy Spirit, the very power of this world, this universal consciousness, this place of great infinite source intelligence. We thank you for that reflection upon the earth, and we thank you that in this place of holiness, that there is an obedience to love, an obedience to kindness, an obedience to gratitude. We humble ourselves now, even allowing ourselves to be filled with that which is spirit, to be filled and, and to even allow for the hand of, of creation to move through us, to remove any hindrances in any energy source, any level of, of our being, our chakra system, any level of our our understanding, our consciousness, we pray that the hand of the ministering angels would move now in that place. And we thank you for all of our relatives, all of our family members, our friends, our, our moms, our dads, our grandmas, our grandpas, our aunties, our uncles. We thank you that you have blessed us, that you have been a shield of faith to protect us from the arrow that flies by night, that you have guided our feet, that you have guided our minds, that you have loosened us to be free and sovereign, that we may live many years of life and see our grandchildren and see our children's children's children, that we may be able to be in that place of recognizing what it means to be in love again, what it means to be whole again, what it means to be grateful again. And we bless this earth now. We bless the administration, we bless the government, every single form of government, every single form of business, every single form of religion, every spiritual community that's out there. We pray your blessing upon this earth. Beauty above, beauty below, beauty beside, beauty in front, beauty behind, beauty within. I am, we are made beautiful again. Aho, I love you guys. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. Please share this if you got something from it. 
we appreciate you and we love you and hope to see you soon. You know, connect with us, the sacred seven.com free book for you. Please go there. Please check us out. Blessings.